praise the name of the Lord. This is Mrs. Pastor Mark from Temple of Worship Ministry Kasarani, located at Lonak Building, opposite Shell Petrol Station and Justin to Naiba Supermarket in Kasarani, Nairobi County. I am grateful to you, my viewer, that you have been tuning in every Sunday. You have been uniting together with us spiritually, wherever you are. You have been supporting us, and we do not take it for granted. We just say a word of thank you. God bless you. Once again, we, are, we will be having our online services every Sunday at 10. In our church, that I have said the location of it, we will also be having our services there every Sunday, live from 10, and we will have a short service every Sunday. Uh, kindly come if you can, if you cannot. Join us into our YouTube channel and the Lord himself shall bless you. We will keep social distance. There will be no hugging. We will check, check temperatures of each and every member that will be getting into the service. And the Lord himself shall be ministering to us. Kindly, as you come to the service, leave the young ones at home, those that are 13 years of age and below, and the Lord himself shall bless you. Unite together with us, together with our pastor, Pastor Mark Mugosi, as we receive the word of God. God bless you. Shalom. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, ma'am, for the introduction. We want to, to go straight to the word of God. And uh, as it has been said, we are back into the services. Uh, so please find your time. Find your way here. We had a wonderful time on Sunday and the God came through for us. We were blessed beyond our expectation and we want to believe that God is going even to bless us more in the coming Sunday. Um, let us go straight to the word of God. Um, but before that, I just want to uh, thank um, our supporters those who have been supporting us um, through our online services, those who have been giving their substance, their money, those who have been praying for us, we're saying God bless you. We are continuing with this ministry. So please get tuned every Sunday at 10 a.m. for a time of a great blessing. And continue supporting us because I know as you support us, the Lord himself is going to to bless you. Amen. Let's go to the word of God in the book of Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 8. We are reading from Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 8. We'll read from verse number 26 through number of, uh, verse 40. The Bible says, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Cadence, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship on his way home, and on his way, was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah, the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I? He said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit, sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of the scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before the shearer is silent. 
So he did not open his mouth. In his, in, in his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the, uh, the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with this very passage of the scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. Why should I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then Philip, then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and the Philip baptized him. When they came out of uh, um, when they came up out of water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, however, appeared at Azostas and had traveled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Um, let's go to the Old Testament read to the verses there in the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua chapter 1 verse number 8 and the verse number 9. The Bible says Joshua chapter 1 verse number 8 and verse number 9 the Bible says do not let this book of the Lord depart from your mouth meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written within it then you will be pros prosperous and successful have I not commanded you be strong and courageous do not be terrified do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go let us pray our father and our God I thank you for giving me yet another chance to speak your word to your people Lord even as your people listen to this word I pray that their lives will be transformed by the anointing of your word I pray that Lord Jesus you will connect people divinely for the glory and honor of your name. I humble myself, Lord, and I decrease that you may increase as I speak your word. Use me as a vessel only, but let the honor and the glory come back to you. I thank you, Father, and I bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to speak to you today about divine connection. Divine is godly. Divine means godly. So when somebody tells you this is divine, it means this is godly. And uh, when I talk about divine connection, I mean godly connection. There are some connections that are godly. There are some connections that are not godly. And so today we want to look at, at divine connection. I want to start by saying our destiny is what we live for. We, we live because we have a hope of tomorrow. We live because we are hoping that things are going to get better. We live because we are hoping that, that the world is going to offer better things in future. We live because we, 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 we are hoping that we are going to be promoted where we work. We live because we hope our businesses are going to improve. If you are running a shop, the hope is that you are going to be able to graduate and even have a wool cell. If you are running in a, a hotel, the hope is that you are going to run a star hotel at some point. It may be a kiosk, but the hope is not that you will have the kiosk for the rest of your life. The hope is that the destiny of your business is going to be different. It's going to get better. And so we live hoping the destiny is going to be better for us. Our destiny speaks bigger and better things. 
that now you know when you think about your life 20 years ago it's so different from what it is today God has enabled you to improve yourself become better every other day you know I I was thinking the other day what if we start life when we die of old age what if life starts there and then goes back be interesting we will not be looking at improvement we will be looking at getting worse every day but you will start by probably enjoying pension you are born and then you start enjoying pension then you become a manager as the years go by you become a supervisor as the years go by you become jobless as the years go by you go back to university as the years go by you go back to high school as we continue you go to primary you find yourself in your mother's back a toddler and then you find yourself in the womb of your mother and that's the end of your life that will be a bit interesting um, and so there will be nothing so much to look forward to we will not look forward to our destiny because our destiny will be getting worse maybe at some point it will be better because when you become a high school boy you have no responsibility now you have to pay house rent now you have to pay school fees for your children now you have to pay uh, uh, so many things that bills that you have to pay every month but when you are a child there are no responsibilities it's only play so maybe that is the destiny that we'll be looking at but that will not motivate us to work hard or to become anything better God says he has good plans to give us a future and a hope you know he's talking about the, the future not the past he doesn't talk about he's going to change your past your past can never be changed if you made a loss yesterday that loss remains if you failed your exam yesterday that failure remains but you can better your tomorrow your, your future and so God always talks about your future he says he has a good plan for you to give you a future and to give you a hope we must be hopeful if we trust in the Lord and this destiny is not determined by what people think of us there are so many people that are that know you that have wished that you die throughout their life they have wished that you die there are people that have wished that you don't succeed when you progress there are people that are annoyed that are not happy there are people that are not happy when you buy a motorbike there are people that are not happy when you buy a car there are people that are not happy when you build a home there are people that are not happy because you have a job and so our destiny cannot be determined by people when if people determine our destiny then our destiny will not have a, a hope because people wish bad your destiny is not what your employer actually thinks it's not even what your parents think your destiny is how you connect with God and I said I am going to talk about divine connection so your destiny is about how you connect with God when we connect with God we connect with our destiny because our destiny is in the Lord it's about God's connection not politicians not how well you know the politician not how well you know the, the bishop not how well you know the, the reverend the pastor not how well you relate with the apostle it's about how well you connect with God connecting with God is getting his anointing when you connect with, with God the anointing of God is in your life his anointing is to build his kingdom his anointing is to strengthen not to weaken you the anointing is about protecting us let me tell you something you are alive today because the anointing of God has protected you not because a witch doctor somewhere gave you some reason it's because God's anointing has been protecting you your connection with God determines what 
you become. Your connection with a witch doctor is going to, to ensure that you perish because witch doctors are of the devil. And I am sure that there are people that are watching me that somehow believe in witch, witchcraft. That somehow believe in a witch doctor. Or somehow you believe in it in the past. Let me tell you something. If you believe in a witch doctor, if you believe in a witch doctor, it was a wrong belief. Because a witch doctor is actually of the devil. I don't know how people actually end up believing witch doctors. They tell you they want to, they want to, they want to treat you so that your children can become successful. The witch doctor's children are not successful. How then can they treat your children to be successful? They tell you they want to treat you so that you don't fall sick. The witch doctor himself is sick or herself. They say they want to treat you so that you can have money and money never does. But the witch doctor is living in the slums. Why can they treat themselves to live in the upmarket? And so this is of the devil. You don't need the connection of a witch doctor. You need the connection of God and a divine connection for that matter. The story we have read, Philip was commanded by God to go to the desert. He didn't know where he was going. He was just commanded by the, by the Spirit to go there. And he met an Ethiopian eunuch who had gone to pray in Jerusalem. You need to understand that those days, all the way from Ethiopia, all the way to Israel, that was one kingdom ruled by one person. And so Ethiopia was part of that kingdom. The Bible talks of Ethiopia in the Bible is referred to as Bush. Let me tell you this country is blessed. The country of Kenya is blessed. Because the Bible says God will bless the country south of Kush. And that is Kenya. Away from that. This Ethiopian eunuch used to go to uh, uh, the people in the kingdom. They used to go to Jerusalem to worship the Lord every other offering. And so the Ethiopian eunuch, who was in high authority, had gone to worship. He was the minister for finance in the queen, uh, in the in the in the kingdom of the queen, queen of Sheba. He was worshiping. A God that he did not know. He was reading the scriptures, but the Bible says he did not understand them. So he was just reading the scriptures while not understanding them. I don't know whether you have read a novel. I don't know whether you have read uh, something and you don't understand what you are reading. It's very boring. And so this guy was reading the scripture. But he was not understanding. Sometimes you may read the scripture yourself and you may not understand. Let me tell you something. Keep reading. God is going to reveal himself through the scripture. Keep reading. When you read and you don't understand, don't stop there. Keep reading. This guy continued reading the scripture. Even when you feel like not praying, keep praying. When you feel like giving up, sleeping, you know, I don't know. But you know when you can be talking, talking, but every time you want to go before the Lord and pray, then you start yawning. Encourage yourself and pray. God is going to hear you. Even when you don't feel like singing, even when you keep singing, Keep believing even when it looks like it's not working. This is the message. Keep believing. Keep loving even when it is not convenient. You know there are people that when you, you weigh them properly, you cannot love them. But you know the Bible commands us to love. So even when you don't feel the love, please keep loving. This is the command of the Lord. The eunuch did not stop reading until the ultimate connection came in. The Bible says, 
when the connection came of Philip, he asked the eunuch, do you understand what you are reading? The eunuch said, how can I understand? I have no one to translate for me. And so Philip got into the chariot and interpreted the scriptures for the eunuch. And the eunuch accepted Jesus. And while they were riding on the chariot, the eunuch said, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And Philip said, nothing. Let's go down there and I baptize you. And they went down there. He was baptized. And the Bible says, Philip was taken away by the Spirit of God. But what happened? The eunuch was left with happiness because he knew Christ and he understood the scriptures. Let me tell you something. When when you when you when you when you connect divinely with the Lord, you will be left happy. When you connect divinely with the Lord, your life will never be the same. When you connect divinely with the Lord, your your family is going to be changed. When you connect divinely with God, your ministry is going to change. When you connect divinely with God, I say, your job, your business is going to change. Because what you need is that divine connection. The anointing of God that changes everything. The Bible says the anointing breaks the yoke of Satan. The, and the connection will change your life. You know Paul? Initially he was called Saul. He used to persecute Christians. He used to go around killing Christians when he hear people are singing songs of praise. He used to go there and kill them. And he used to take joy and pride in killing Christians. But he had an encounter with the Lord. He had a divine connection with God. The Bible that we read today Almost half of it is written by Paul. Because after the divine connection, his life changed for good. He could not kill the Christians. He started preaching the gospel. He became a preacher. He became an author. He became a motivator to Christians. He even changed his name. Let me tell you something. Your destiny will change when you connect with God. When he encountered the destiny changer. When he was anointed with the oil. This is where the destiny of David changed. When Samuel came and he anointed him with oil. He did not become the, the king. But his destiny changed immediately. That encounter left him stronger. The Bible says he killed, uh, he killed even lions and bears. And eventually he killed Goliath. This is from a humble, weak shepherd. He used to tend the flocks few. There were not even many. But when he encountered the divine connection with God, he became strong. He became courageous. He became powerful. He became Goliath killer. A young man from the bush. When you connect with God, you will be stronger. When you connect with God, your life will change. When you connect with God, people may look at you as a weak person, but your life will be, will be different. When you connect with God, you are going to inherit the things that God has talked to us about. You remember the beggar in the temple, in the gate called Beautiful. He used to be taken there every morning to beg the arms from the people that were coming to church. But let me tell you something. He was here. He stood up and walked. When God connects with you, you're going to stand up and you're going to walk boldly. Your, your healing is coming out of your divine connection. You may be watching and you're saying, Pastor, I'm sick. I am telling you what you need is not, is not, is not to give is not to give some offering somewhere. What you need is not is not to be lied to by somebody somewhere. What you need is the divine connection. The divine connection from God. That's what you need. 
when you get the divine connection then you receive your healing you remember Moses he was a stammerer he could not speak one word uh, did you whether you know the stammerers you know uh, when we were young in primary school we used to we used to have I don't know whether it was true but we used to uh, believe that the kanyamba kanyanga kawembe mtu ambaye anaongea na anastama anastama mpaka anaguka kabisa and so we sometimes we used to do that even when teachers are stammering to nakanyanga wembe eh but we have to check so Moses was like that he was a stammerer he could not speak one word like that but connecting with God when he connected with God at the burning bush when the divine connection came to him at the burning bush Moses changed from that point he stopped being he continued stammering but he became a powerful leader a strong leader that delivered the children of Israel from Egypt to Israel a stammerer a man that could not speak straight a man that could not speak the one word you understand so you need to tell people even when they tell you you cannot speak to the public you cannot you cannot you cannot think straight they may tell you that your family is not a family of people who have been made it to school you may may tell you that your family is not of a people that do business they may tell you that your family is not for people that understand things easily you need to look at them straight and tell them don't look down on me if you don't know who I am connected to the one that I am connected to can change somebody overnight don't judge the people that you see by what you know about them judge them by the god that they are connected to you know the story of the woman with the issue of blood she had suffered for many years many years she was bleeding continuously and i believe that she was smelling but when she had an encounter with the cloth of jesus just touching the helm of the garment just touching the helm of the garment that divine connection healed her blood flow instantly you need to touch the helm of the garment of jesus christ most abraham was a moon worshiper let me tell you Abraham was not a man that used to worship living God. He used to worship the moon. But when he had a divine connection with God, he became a father of many nations. Simon Peter was a fisherman. And a fisherman was believed or regarded as the lowest profession in Israel. It was for lazy people. It was for people that have failed to make it in life. He stopped fishing fish and started fishing men because of divine connection. You remember Gideon? He was the least in the in the clan of Manasseh. But he became a man of valor after connecting with God. And so what you need is divine connection in life. What you need to understand is not how well you are connected with your governor. Yes, I'm not saying you should not connect with your governor. You should. I'm not saying you should not connect with your MP. You should. I'm not saying you should not connect with big people in this country. You should. I'm not saying you don't connect with your pastor. You should. But let me tell you something. What you need most is the divine connection, connecting to God. That makes the difference. So my prayer for you today, my viewer, as you watch, is that God is going to connect you for great business. If you are there you are a business person. I am speaking to you that God is going to connect you for greater business. The divine connection is going to bring business for you. The divine connection is going to accept, to to accelerate your studies. The great uh, the divine connection is going to is going to bring a promotion for you. The great divine connection is going to become to bring a coming for you. The great divine connection is going to to make you a mighty preacher in the name of Jesus Christ. The connection with God is going to heal you and heal the sick that you lay hands on. The divine connection is going to bring you favor. The great divine connection
connection is going to give you children. The divine connection is going to give you a mighty family. The divine connection is going to bring growth in your life. Somebody say, hey man, what we need is divine connection. More than anything else, divine connection, connecting with God. When you connect with Him, your life changes. And my prayer for you today is that you connect with God today. Maybe you are there, you are saying, Pastor, I need this divine connection. I need to connect with God. I can help you by faith. If you are there, you are saying you need to connect with God. Number one, remember what the eunuch did. Number one, he accepted Jesus. He was baptized. And the Bible says, when Philip disappeared, then he became happy as he was riding in his chariot. So there are, there are procedures. It doesn't just happen. You, 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 you don't just connect with God by just wishing, oh, I want to connect with God. It, it, it may not happen. So you need to give your life to Christ. If you are there, you want to give your life to Christ, I want to lead you to a repentance prayer. Say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I repent of my sins. Forgive me. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. In Jesus' name. Well, if you have prayed that prayer, God has forgiven you. You are born again. You need now to move to the next level. And the request that God gives you the divine connection. Or if you know the Lord, you are saved, uh, and you know the Lord, you didn't need to pray, pray this prayer. We want to go and pray for divine connection. And I want you to believe with me wherever you are. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I am praying for my viewer today that Lord, you connected them divinely to you in the name of Jesus Christ. There are some that have struggled with their businesses. I am praying for a divine connection with you, Lord, that their businesses are going to improve. There are some that have struggled with their families. Lord, I am praying that you divinely connect them with you and the problems in the family are going to end. There are some that are that are that have been struggling with their jobs. Lord, I am praying from today that you 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 open doors for their promotion in the name of Jesus Christ. There are some even that have been praying to get a job. Lord, I am praying for divine connection. And Lord, you enable them to be able even to uh, to get jobs to the glory and the honor of your name. I thank you, Father, because I see doors that are opening today. I see doors for your people that are opening for divine connection in the name of Jesus. I worship you, Father, and I bless you in Jesus' name. I pray. Somebody say amen. Well, you need to have faith to receive this. And uh, uh, as I wind up, I want to say a special thank you once again to our members of Temple of Worship and even those who have been viewing this program. We are continuing with uh, our ministry in YouTube. We're not going to stop. We are not going to stop because we have been called for this ministry. And so keep watching and may the Lord himself bless you and connect you divinely. Shalom.